So uh, it's it's the last week of America. Yeah. Series finale, everybody. I, I, ho- I hope I hope you've all enjoyed this country. It's it's been a whole lot of fun to be part of. It's it's run for two hundred seasons. We had a good almost. run. Yeah, run. over two hundred seasons. Yeah, it's it's almost two hundred twenty five seasons or two hundred like that. Yeah, yeah. two hundred fifty yes. seasons. Yeah, a lot of seasons to America. Two hundred fifty seasons. But you know, now it actually beat out Doctor Who. Beat out now, Doctor Who. Now it's over. Now it's over. Now we're going to go out with a racist orange. I miss the annoying. Can you? I miss the annoying orange. Yeah. I almost would have preferred having the annoying orange for president as opposed to this one. I'm kind of bummed because I wanted to go to one of the women's marches, but they're the next day. I'm off on Friday. I'm not off on Saturday because I work retail and there's no such thing as a Saturday off in retail. So I can't go and I'm bummed about that. I think I'm going to binge West Wing on Netflix all day Friday. Well, don't worry. There, We're going to have many more chances to protest yeah, many more things. Be the last protest. That's true. Oh, no. he's gonna. There, there's going to be a whole lot of horrible things to get us motivated and out into the streets. But yeah, I think I'm just going to binge watch ne- uh, La West Wing all day Friday. And just. What? Why are you staring at me? Oh, are you staring? Dottie's not staring anymore. Dottie went to sleep. Hi, Grady. Hi, Grady. What's up? Stop, stop looking at that other cat, you asshole. What's up, pal? What do you Don't want? cheat on me. What do you want? Oh, but hey, there's other various and sundry stupid out in the world this week and more benign, less World War Three stupid. You know how many angry comments we're going to get for bitching about Trump, right? They I don't give a shit. How dare you? You guys, you guys used to be so funny and then you got all political and, and, and this is why we won. Yeah. You and know what? Nice. I got to live with the motherfucker, so shut the fuck up. Anyway. I had an angry Trumper on tweet today, and I said, shine on, you crazy diamond. And he asked me why I was quoting Rihanna. And then he called me stupid. And I was like, oh, honey. Honey, no. That's, that's, that's Pink Floyd. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Why is my mic level all the way up now? Stop that. Passing right over your roof? No. It sounded like there was. No. No, Rihanna did not cover that. (sighs) Rihanna has a song called Shine Bright Like a Diamond. Pink Floyd has a song called Shine On You Crazy Diamond. You idiot didn't know the difference. We're starting off with... We have video this week. We have so much video this week. A a disappointing amount of video this week. Um... We're going to start in Florida. As is tradition. No one likes their cell phone provider. No one. No one. I don't care who you're with. No one likes your cell phone. If you're with Sprint, you don't like Sprint. If you're with AT&T, you don't like AT&T. If you're with Verizon, you don't like Verizon. If you're with T-Mobile, you don't like T-Mobile. And this week, T-Mobile customer really did not like... T-Mobile. I think I'm on T-Mobile. You wouldn't do this, though. You would not do this. Let's have a look at the video. Here we go. That's your T-Mobile store right there. Okay, well, I wouldn't do that because I drive a really small roller skate of a car, and I actually think it would just bounce. Whoa! 
hell, that happened? They say an angry customer in Palm Springs, Florida, drove her SUV into a T-Mobile store after a dispute over an iPhone. Witnesses told ABC affiliate WPBF in Palm Springs, Florida, the woman jumped the sidewalk, drove into the store, got out of the SUV, and began smoking, smashing things with a broken window frame. Because it's not enough to drive through the front window. Of course not. And you gotta get up and start breaking the shit you didn't manage to run over. Authorities say the woman was upset that she'd have to pay, had to have her cracked iPhone screen replaced when she claimed to have phone insurance. Oh, you're in for a rude awakening when you find out how car insurance works. <laughs> what do you mean I gotta pay for that? Because you're going to have to pay for that, too. I insured this thing. I shouldn't have to pay for that. Also a lawyer. Yeah, because here's what you could have done. You could have called corporate. And trust me, if you're in retail. Don't do, don't do this to me. Don't, calling corporate. Yeah, they'll give you everything you want and a gift card. Yep, they they will they will fix every they will bend over backwards if you actually call the corporate office of any company. But the actual employees you deal with will hate you forever and probably spit in your food. Because the people who who were in that store, they'll get chewed out for not doing whatever ridiculous thing you asked for. You call corporate we tell you no because we're following the policy that corporate set for us. Right. Then you call corporate and yell at them. Then corporate gives you what you want and a gift card and calls us to yell at us about following the policy that they set. Mm -hmm. And we hate you. And if you do follow the policy, they if you, if you don't follow the policy they set and fix it for them without them calling corporate in the first place, then we get in trouble for that too. You can't win! Now that, and you know how much it would have cost her to call corporate? Now, how much is a new fucking T-Mobile store going to cost? More. You have bought the store, lady. It's like you said you break it, you buy it. If she'd just gone in and smashed a couple, you would have bought the phone. You bought all them phones? And I hate to tell you, but you bought the store, and now all the iPhones are cracked. Because you ran them over. <laughs> you bought you bought a brand new window. You bought all of these phones. You bought the whole store and it's all broken. Yep. And now you go into jail. Where you won't have to worry about your cracked iPhone screen. That's the good news. The suspect who WPBF identified as Shinobia Wright caused 30 thousand dollars worth of damage to the store wow so let's see calling corporate absolutely nothing you know what else you could do you could just pay for a new fucking phone screen that would like, have been a lot that would have been a lot less expensive you could just be like well gosh i broke my fucking phone screen i guess that's going to cost money to replace because goods and services cost money you could do that. You could. You didn't. You drove your you drove your car into into the you drove your car. You drove your you drove your fucking car into the fucking store. There's pretty much no situation where that is your best option. No. I mean maybe Maybe, like, if Ultron is in the store <laughs> and you're trying to save the world, <sighs> maybe that would be among your solutions. And now, you've, now you're in jail, and they don't let you out of jail. And they don't let you have an iPhone in jail. Of course. They don't even care how many Instagram followers you have. <laughs> of course. Now that you're in jail... 
trying to get out of jail. There's there's a woman in Venezuela had someone in jail and, and had an interesting way to try to get them out of the jail. I've, I don't think I've ever seen this one before. Points for originality, I should say. Woman caught trying to smuggle boyfriend out of jail in a suitcase. Oh, okay. Venezuelan woman is arrested after several guards caught her trying to break her boyfriend out of jail by smuggling him in her suitcase. They do bag checks. Antoinetta Robeles Sauda, 25, and her six-year-old daughter went to visit her boyfriend, Jose, Vegas, uh, Jose Vargas Garcia, who was serving a nine-year prison sentence in Venezuela. While there, she put the man in the suitcase and attempted to sneak him out. While she tried to walk past the guard, she struggled, she struggled to push the suitcase, which prompted them to search the luggage and led to the discovery. Do they not do bag checks at prisons in Venezuela? Because here, I'm pretty sure, whatever you bring in, like, they're checking. And just so you guys can appreciate how stupid an idea this was, there's the picture. Yeah. And you have to think about that. Like, I can't lift Dan. Nope. I don't think I could carry a suitcase containing Dan. No, but Tara, but Tara, but Tara, it's okay though. It's okay though, Tara, because the suitcase got wheels. Yeah, but you still have to be able to pull it. <laughs> I don't think I would do very well dragging Dan if he had wheels on his But it's got either. wheels though. Problem solved. It's got wheels though. It's fine. This is why I tell him to not get arrested. What? <laughs> We could put. We could put wheels on your butt and try it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wouldn't no. wouldn't be our weirdest Monday night. True. I'll leave you all to speculate what that means. But it's got wheels on it though. It's fine. It's absolutely fine because it's got wheels. And the reason they were able to find it is because she couldn't drag it. She couldn't. Dra so now what? It, it, instead of him getting out of jail, now you're both in the jail. You and see now your child works? is... Social in services. Yeah. <sighs> Don't help the fanfic writers. I don't think anybody's writing fanfic about me and my husband. Although, this guy... You are... Like, I'm sorry, you need better... Look at how this guy is folded up in this suitcase. I know. That's some impressive. He is impressively limber. I kind of like see that guy with no collarbone that was able to get baby Jessica out of the well. I kind, yeah, I kind of see why this woman wanted him out of jail because you can't find <laughs> you can't find a man like that often. That's true. That's that is some that, that's limber. That's yeah. Oh, 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 this next... Jesus Christ. You know what? People are going to get pissed about this one, and I don't fucking care because this guy was a fucking moron. I, I, you know what? Yeah, give us all your angry comments. I don't give a shit. There is no justifying this. Man allegedly exposes himself to woman on Orange Line after bringing up elections from Boston. Malden man was arrested early Wednesday morning for allegedly exposing himself to a woman on an orange line train after he brought up the 2016 presidential election. Officers responded to a call from the Forest Hill station in Jamaica Plains regarding a man later identified as James Sh uh, Sachetti. Is that it? Sachetti? I'm thinking probably Sachetti. James Sachetti exposing himself to an adult woman on a train. Sacchetti, 30, allegedly approached the woman and initiated a conversation about the election. Assuming she voted for Hillary Clinton, he implied her decision was a poor choice. When the woman responded by telling her that her vote was for personal business, he allegedly stood up from his seat, unbuckled his belt, lowered his pants and underwear to expose himself to her 
He then exited the train. Officers located Sacchetti at the north end of the station, took him into custody. Another passenger on the train corresponded to the victim's allegations. Why are people angry at this? I mean, I mean, I know why people are angry at this, but why are we going to get angry comments about this? Well, because obviously we're siding with the woman here. Yes. And because you don't whip it out on the train. Yeah, but, you know, but emails. No. <laughs> you know what? You know what Trump's emails? Unsolicited dick. <laughs> Even what in the, Boston, even what, in Baston. What the fuck? What the, he's like? They, oh, I can get away with this now. It's okay. No, it's not okay. You're going to jail. You're going to. How, is that how you? That's not how you win any argument. It's not like, well, okay, you have a good point, but on the other hand, my penis. That's not going to win any arguments. I mean, unless. Mike says, well, at least he picked the right line. The orange line, yes. Yes. yes well done, did. Mike. Well done. Yes, he did. But I just, I, I just, it, your dick is not going to solve any argument. And she was refusing to argue with him. She was like, it's none of your fucking business. Back up off my shit. It's. What is, what is wrong? It's an old rule, but it still holds true. Unless they specifically say so, move through your life assuming that no one wants to see your dick. Yep. Yep. I think that's... Unless just... you are told otherwise, assume no one wants to see your dick. You know, I'm not ashamed to say that, say this, but I think I had never heard anyone ever express it in that way before our show. Yeah. And I think if there's anything I could ever take credit for in my life, what wise... That's our, that's our service to humanity, right? What there. wise piece of information we can pass on to our fellow human beings is that no one, just, no one you know, wants to see your death. I have a dream. There's ask not what your country can do for you. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. No, no one, one wants, wants to see your dick. No one wants to see your dick. It's... Unless they say so. Unless, unless, yes, unless you're explicitly saying, hello, good sir, might I see your penis? Sometimes I say that to my husband. <laughs> exactly in those words. <laughs> do, you, do you have monocle walk it to me? Ew. I have, my, I have my special sex monocle that I wear. <laughs> It does it for him. Hello, good sir. Might I see your penis? I have to do that accent the whole uh, time, which is really difficult. Pip, pip, cheerio. <laughs> I was telling everybody about <laughs> <laughs> oh. Speaking of England, well, actually, no, this is a story from an English newspaper, but it's about Australia, so I guess not English at all. My bad. But I wanted to move us along. Um, this one comes from Australia, is where the story started. So it probably involves giant spiders or terrifying snakes? No, no it does not. Oh. Just idiots. Just complete fucking idiots. Uh, not only what they did, but how they communicated about what they did is... Uh, can you even breathe... Nor do you forget to breathe sometimes? It's one of those kind of stories. Man fined after stealing a rare monkey from Sydney Wildlife Park and attempting to sell it by text message. Man has been fined $2,500 after he found after he was found with a rare miniature monkey which was stolen from a wildlife park last year. Jackson George, 23, and his brother, Jesse George, 26, from New South Wales, pled guilty to possession of property of a crime after a four-week-old pygmy marmoset was found in a car they were traveling in last November. Jackson was accused of planning to sell one of the three monkeys stolen from the park. Now, that's already stupid enough. Look at that little monkey. Look at the little monkey. Everyone want to see the little monkey? There's the little monkey. That's a pygmy marmoset. 
That's a little tiny monkey. Now that's dumb enough. But here, here is the really dumb part. Here is the text messages. I swear to God, these are the real, honest to God text messages they sent regarding attempting to sell this monkey. You can see for yourself. Hey, check out my monkey. That's mad, bro. Want to sell it, bro? Uh-huh. Bro, want to sell that monkey thing? Uh-huh. I think they mean ha-ha, but they can't type. Yeah, but I might want to keep it for a few days, see how it goes. How much you pray, how much you pay, bro? Paid nothing, got it from the zoo last night. Ha ha. Three of them and a baby Joey. Oh, so he also stole a baby kangaroo. Because a Joey is a baby kangaroo. I'll buy it, bro. Let me know when you want to sell. So here is the entire criminal transaction. I feel like we missed the opportunity to do that as a as a dramatic play, you and I. <laughs> Something for the ages there. I just, it, it, I you just. You don't know how to care for that animal? You, I am confident, did not do the proper research on how to care for that animal. Nope. Also, zoos are not libraries. You can't check out an animal. No, you cannot. And you're an asshole. And and they have the, the admission on the text message that he stole it. Yeah. Here, I, I don't know if you, you get this, but just because you sent it over the internet, it still counts in real life. It does. This is what's known as admissible evidence. People don't understand that. And I know this because of the things people say to me on Twitter that I know they would never say to me if they met me in person. Mm -hmm. so people, people forget that sometimes that even if you only say it on the internet, you still fucking said it. But yeah, that's the thing. No, it, it don't count though, because I was online. You so count. it don't count though. No, it don't count though. Because it was just, a, it wasn't in the real world. You're going to jail. Yeah. Those poor little monkeys. We've got more video from Wisconsin. Um, I'm not even going to give any context for this one. I'm just going to play the video and let everyone try to imagine themselves in the position of this poor police officer. And, and because, because Jesus Christ. The, the police officer is Jesus Christ? No. No, no. But remember you said that. We'll come back to it later. Um, you segued and you didn't even know you segued. Um, so I'm just going to play this for everyone and let you picture this is your, this is your, uh, what night does this happen? This is your Sunday night, midnight on patrol, when all of a sudden this shit happens. <laughs> Boom! Out of fucking nowhere! <laughs> oh my. Out of oh. abs. <laughs> he cracked it. He cracked it. <laughs> Boom! Out of fucking nowhere. How drunk do you have to be? Man, 25 rings in New Year with belly flop onto windshield of Wisconsin police car. Cody James Romano, the 25-year-old Wisconsin resident, rang in the New Year by performing an exquisite belly flop atop the windshield of a police cruiser. Romano, for some reason, charged the stationary squad car shortly after midnight Sunday. As he reached the vehicle's front, stand, front end, Romano launched himself into the air. Upon landing, Romano smashed the windshield of the cruiser, which was occupied by a Menasha. Uh, uh, Menasha or Menasha? Uh... I want to say Menasha, but it's probably Menasha. 
I, I don't know. Menasha Police Department officer. After a scuffle with the cops, Romano was taken into custody, transported to a local hospital for, for treatment. Investigators say Romano, seen above. Let's have a look at him. Dude, he fucked up that car. Had been drinking prior to his ill-conceived execution of the January 1st belly flop. Have a look at what he did to the car. That's what his fucking gut. He fucked up that car. Holy shit. Did you eat bricks? Oh, recorder in the channel says, it's not the new year until the belly drops. Is that what they do in Wisconsin? <laughs> do they just drop a fat guy on a car? <laughs> <laughs> like you could at least drop a wheel of cheese or something like oh <laughs> you don't gotta just straight up drop a fat guy <laughs> that doesn't is, seem very fun that is an impressive amount of devastation though i must say seriously god damn son is that like colossus's out of shape brother <laughs> And the 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 mugshot tells the tale. Just look at him. He's just like, I know. Whatever, man. I That's, know. I got the spins real bad. <laughs> Minosha. Oh, I was completely wrong. No. Oh. There's no O. There's no O. How do you get Minosha from that? There's no O. I don't know. It's, it's like they're trying to trick you. They do this shit just to trick people who read the news. Yeah. On purpose. I mean, it, it still makes more sense than most words in Irish, so. Uh, so for our last story this week, I saved the worst best for last. Remember you were talking about Jesus? Yeah. Naked man arrested after crashing car into house, punching trooper, telling cops he's Jesus. That is not what Jesus would do. <laughs> Connellville, Pennsylvania. Troopers say a man is being evaluated at Pittsburgh Hospital after he crashed a car into a Connellsville house, ran down a highway naked afterward. The suspect, whose name has not been released, accused of crashing into the home along Route 119. Homeowner Lara Felger was inside at the time and felt the house vibrate. As I came outside, I saw the car in my house into my basement. I didn't see the driver. I heard him yelling. In the first sec 30 seconds of me getting outside, he was already out the window and gone around the front of the house. Witnesses say the man stripped naked as he ran down Route 119. State troopers stopped him in the parking lot of Excursion Salon. Investigators say he punched a trooper and told them that his name was Jesus Christ. Suspect was taken to Highlands Hospital, laser tra later transferred to Allegheny General. You know, <sighs> this could be Jesus. And he came back you know, he came back to save us. <laughs> and then he saw what America had done and promptly lost his fucking shit. Jesus is done with our shit, is what you're saying. And you have to admit, him, like, jumping out the window of the house he crashed into is a little rolled the stone away from the cave. This could be the actual second coming of Jesus, except Jesus thinks we're assholes. I love what Lulu Mew in the channel says. Must be some New Testament stuff. Yeah. I... It's one of those Gnostic Gospels. Look. Jesus I... showed up and was like, my children. Oh, fuck this. <laughs> I just, I and really, can you blame him? I'm pretty sure as aliases go, this one is pretty much easily disproven. Because the first thing they're going to do is they're going to check for holes in your hands. They're going to see if you can walk on water. They're going to hand you some bread and some fish. And you're not going to be able to do shit. So. But what if he was? <laughs> 
<laughs> You're still stuck on that. What if this was Jesus? What if they handed him bread and fish and he multiplied them? Like, you'd be like, well, you can go. <laughs> I guess. I just, it. Do you feel like you should play the American Jesus by Bad Religion after this? <laughs> I, and I love how he just as immediately after See, crashing. Skate. <laughs> I love that the minute after he crashes his car, his first thought is, well, my work here is done. Zoom. <laughs> Running down the street, stripping off his clothes. Clothes. Where's my fucking loincloth? <laughs> I, I mean, to be fair, Jesus would be a shitty driver. They didn't have cars back then. <laughs> He's not Jesus, Tara. You don't know that. I do know. That was not Jesus. You don't. That was not Jesus, though. Tara. Justin. Tara is not Jesus. I haven't identified him. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's not Jesus. It's not even, I can't believe it's not Jesus. It's not Jesus. It could be. It's <laughs> Right now he's Schrod he's like Schrodinger's Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he is both Jesus and not Jesus <laughs> at the same time. Because we don't know. <laughs> Schrodinger's Christ. There we go. There's our title for the week. Schrodinger's <laughs> Christ. Uh, so I guess the first thing we learned this week is make sure you can back up your alias, yo. Yeah. Because have a miracle or two ready if called upon. Yeah, you know, have, to have that ready. We've learned that stomach beats car. I've never so, seen that. Sometimes? i never seen that. i got to play that video again because that was amazing. I don't think my stomach could beat a car. That, that, that video, though, one more time, just for the record... Well, bam, though! We learned that New Year's Eve in Wisconsin sucks. Or is lit, depending on your perspective. <laughs> that was still very impressive. Yeah. We've learned that if don't, if you're going to commit a crime, do not place the evidence of said crime on the internet because it still counts. Yeah. And leave the animals at the zoo. Leave them at the, it's not a lending library. You are not prepared to take care of them. We've like, learned. I, I love me some hippos. I'm not gonna steal a hippo because I don't have the resources to care for a hippo until we make our millions and I have an estate. We've learned as a general rule, the answer to winning an argument is not your dick. Almost Just, never. Almost never. I'm not going to rule it out. Because the argument is, come on, you don't have a dick. I, I'm not going to rule it out because the minute we say so, someone is going to bring up some instance in which a dick would win the argument. But as well, a general rule, if they were arguing over whether you had a dick, then whipping out your dick would win the argument because you would prove that you had a dick. And not that, you know, my mm -hmm. audience is a bunch of pedantic some bitches. Um, I got way loud. Uh, we've learned that if you have someone in jail and you want to get them out of jail, a suitcase is not going to get them out of jail. Maybe try a tunnel. Tunnels seem to work. <clears throat> no, Tara, don't help them. I'm just saying. You should try a tunnel. No, don't. Don't help. This is not helping. And finally, we've learned when you have a customer service issue, calling corporate is your free option. Don't S encourage that. I, I, but as opposed to smashing your car into the store. You know what? At least if some asshole drove through the front of my store, I wouldn't have to go to work the next day. <laughs> 